So hello everybody, it is Power Week, it means that the Power BI team has released a new Power BI desktop update. This time it is August 2020 and in today's video I am going to do a quick review of the features so you know what to expect. But just as a heads up, four features if you are a business intelligence professional and two if you are a business user. Let's get started. Okay, guys, let's start with the business user features, which is also obviously meant for business intelligence professionals. The first one is the rectangular lasso. It means that you can select points by using a rectangular, you know, by drawing a rectangle on your visual. So you see a few things that you need to know about this. Number one, you can control select or you can shift select. The control select will select and deselect, very confusing. The shift select will do what you expect, so you shift. Okay, why do you need to press a key? Well, if you click on a visual and move it, move your mouse, it will move the visual. So they couldn't have that feature on Power BI Desktop. On Power BI service, you don't need to click any key, but on Power BI Desktop, you need to either control move or shift move. You shift. Trust me on this one. <laughs> okay. Other things that you need to know, it is in beta, so it is a preview. You have to activate the preview. It is limited to 300 points, which I think is enough, but it is only available on three visuals, which is the line chart, the area chart, and the scatter chart, unfortunately. They are going to roll out to more visuals as they go along, but for now it's only those three features. Another thing that you need to know it is that you have to republish your report for the lasso to work, okay? So if you're trying it like, <laughs> this is not working, it's because you have to activate the preview, publish it to the service, and then it will work, which is a pain, but hey, <laughs> it is what it is. Now, the second one for business users, it is a Power Query. Um, do you remember I've shown you before how to get data from web? They have this by example, which is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Well, they have brought that functionality to text and CSV. So there is an algorithm that will help you extract the text that you want from a test or a CSV. Now, I love to create my own M, so I'm not going to use it that much, but if I was a business user, I would be jumping up and down of my chair because it is a really, really, really cool feature. Give it a go. Definitely give it a go, okay? Now, let's review the ones that I believe are only for business intelligence professionals, right? The first one is that organizational visuals are now allowed now visuals from the App Store directly. So before you had to download the file from the App Store and upload it as an organizational visual, you don't need to do that anymore. You can add App Store visuals into your organizational store directly, which is very, very nice. And the last one is about perspectives. Perspectives, what an interesting concept. Perspective is something that exists in SSAS. I've seen it before and it's a very, Interesting concept, let's put it that way. Let's say that you want to have one humongous big model on your, you know, data warehouse and you understand that, okay, if I'm delivering this model to my marketing team, there are some tables and there are some columns that they don't need. So you can actually hide those things and then you can have the same model delivered to your sales team and then they will see some common fields, but other ones they will be hidden. So you will have like a, a view of your model, depending on who your user is, which I think is actually a brilliant feature. It's obviously something that you normally do on the back source. And um, they have enabled that for Power BI. Uh, I am a little bit wary of this one true model that rules it all. I don't believe in that at all. I know when I work, was working as a business user, you know, we had these big models, but you always have to put it together with your data. But still, I think that this is a quite cool thing because there are a lot of things that you need when you're developing tools that your users don't need to do and perspectives can actually help hiding that, like supporting tables and, you know, like sorting columns and that kind of stuff. So this is actually nice. There is a but though, and it is that you need to have a external tool 
doing that. In this case, it's a tabular editor. I, I mean, if you're a business user, it makes no sense. Nobody's going to learn tabular editor to do this. They have promised to bring this to the Power BI desktop. So let's wait for that. But if you are a business user, a business intelligence, the professional, then open the tabular editor and you will be able to create perspectives there. Okay. So this is all for the August update. What is your favorite feature? For me, it's gotta be the Power Query feature for sure. The lasso is just too limited, too limited for sure to, to be excited about it yet. So tell me the, what is your favorite feature? And I will see you again tomorrow on another Dax Fridays. I think it's a cool Dax Fridays video that it might surprise you actually, who knows? Anyhow, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.